find the first. It was their pick, Vertigo. Now Mouse Sports looking to find the rebuttal. It is something that they've certainly got some fine-tuned and easily to identifiable uh, traits on their train, and they do look like they'll be starting on that T side. So expect to see some battles out of main, getting Chris J or Carrigan under the G2 skin. But looks like the pistol is a different variation. We're going to be seeing a fast smoke towards Connector in a goes all the way in towards connector inside and robs of a beautiful shot. That's Kenny S going down, a bit of aggression there towards Ivy. Smoke is down and now Manek to defend. One, and maybe oh. two. It's actually going to be Hunter. He's out. Chipping away on one of them, but Rops will claw it back with a sensational second. This is why they give him the P250. Four kills. Rops has won this round on his own. Mm, that's beautiful. Frozen, he gets given a P250 as well. They give their stars of the show exactly what they need. Well, there it is. Rob's delivering on all fronts here. It was a P250 shot to kick things off. Aggression for Kenny S. And then it seemed like GG had some footing into the round, but apparently not. Rob's just finding absolutely every head, and that's going to be kicking them off in the right direction here. It's going to be some sort of force by the margin from G2. And yes, is it ever? It's going to be three scouts, two pistols, and looking to cause as much chip damage as they can with the scouts. Over to the CZs and Deagle can close things out. Big round here, and this one normally converts, to be honest with you, on train. We'll see what G2 can make of it. Well, you don't normally see an Ivy anti-eco approach, right? That's one of the uh, choke points we like them to stay away from. But there's not a huge amount of attention there right now. It's just Amanek having to deal with what could potentially be on the other side of that smoke. For all he knows, it could be clear. Some utility used right now. They've actually smoked off towards the pop positions. So that's going to lock Jax in place. Flashes over the yard. That would be a tell that there's working through main, but... All the action will be on Ivy here. Leading the way with the Deagle. Will be out of Chris. Oh, it's a P250, not a Deagle. Not a big gun, just a little one. Oof, not bad. Big nade, though. Yeah, that's going to soften him up for Deagles, just like that. Oh. Two body shots, one headshot. Nixa adds two to his tally. However, a flurry of frags from Frozen Carrigan and even Rops adding his name to the list has put us all onto Amanek, an unarmored scout. A known position as well. This one's all said and done. It was looking so good here for the G2 boys, but this four spy has been shut down and sent packing. Mouse Sports were looking for 3 0 now as they're up against a full eco. Robs with two more kills to his name there and manages to avoid death. 6 and 0. Round three coming up, and we will have not much available for the CT side here. Nexa, two opening kills of that big AG as well. That's a five on three. You didn't they convert this one, but out of nowhere. All the kills required for Mouse Sports, blinking, you miss it. And just a single flashbang here. So just going to be setting themselves up in one position. Already tucked away outside. One flash and see what can be done. They could be rushing Ivy as well. This and could be quick. Will. So there's one flash on the corner and in they go. No one there though. Frozen is and he wants to have a little gallery. Does tap away at the first, but a couple of dinks are going to get him a bit more of a passive stance. Teammates coming to back him up as well. So he's managed to buy enough time to stop that CT. Barrage. Oh, they want to run boost through it. Yeah. Oh. But they're not getting it. It doesn't Let's really go. matter. Let's try it again. Here we go. Catapult, trebuchet, and yeah, Jax was the projectile. He is met by Frozen, just using that P250. Dropped his AK if he was going to go down. I wonder if it's within a retrievable range. I think Chris got it. I think they swapped weapons right ah, okay. there. Because you can see Chris, he doesn't have a pistol, and he was rocking that P250 before. Because I've been reading this Lonely Planet book a little bit more. And yeah. uh, I was looking at the wildlife that's over there in uh, in Brazil. And uh, did you know that they have a poison dart frog? I've, I've heard of that. Those are the ones that are like those really vibrant colors. That's a... Uh... There's a poison I think it's called a bullfrog. Oh, maybe. Those ones are cool. I remember those. Back in primary school, we did a whole thing on the Amazon rainforest. And sure. Like that. I'm remembering all the bullfrogs and the dangerous <laughs> yeah, colors. Yeah. Uh, the color means they're dangerous. Yeah. They want what to about tell tarantulas, the Henry? There's, poisonous. There's tarantulas, there's a, give me a question. There's a tarantula. I, a tarantula. I won't give you a question. I'll give oh. you a little, a little bit of information. Bit of trivia? Yeah. The Amazon has several species of huge, hairy arachnids, including oh, one like with a leg span of more than 33 centimeters. And I might put it in uh, a measurement you might be able to that's uh, relate to. That's just a ruler. To. Henry, that's uh, 13 inches. <laughs> that is quite a big spider. Um, I like the sound of that. I'd like a pet spider. Maybe we should get one in Malta. Nice little cage for it. Or we could just run free. Uh, yeah, it will be caged. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we could, we could have like a, an open range one, but uh, I think we already have spider. a couple of those in the house. Don't you worry about that. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's the opening smoke that we've seen from Mouse Watts time and time again here on train. The five lane and the e box smoke. There was the Molotov down towards the back of the green train as well. 
but they haven't actually followed through on this. They're just going for a default spread. Pop control, one guy above the box holes, watching for inside pushes, and that could be on the cards here. Look at this from G2. Three individuals now combing through the box holes. Yeah, they're going to have to see if they can get further together. Three of them committing to this spot. They find Ropsey. He's just committed to one of the smoke. He's going to drop down towards Pop Dog. Lovely movement as well. Simon, as you like. Jax, none the wiser. Do they want to commit down here? Oh, they Hello. do. Hi. Hi, 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 hi. Bides his time, and there's the first. Looking for the second. No, I'm Chris tough. J, very quick to react, and so managing to keep the advantage minimal. And Karaka can't believe his luck. Nexa staring at the bomb train, hoping to catch one crossing. Instead, the bomb's now down, and this flank will be a lot. Jax taking Voxic out of the equation. A second frag necessary. Carrigan tucked in, frozen on the bomb train as well. That Molotov. Oh, oh it's a good one. I like that. Fortunately, oh, does manage to get one kill back there, so it did lead into a frag at least, but it will be Mouse Sports extending the lead, and G2 find maximum loss bonus, but that doesn't get you too far on the CT side. Mouse Sports, their pick. Looking very confident. G2 will have to give this one up as well. Partial buys available at the very top end. That's Scouts and Deagles again. I don't know how Chris J is reacting to this. The communication very good at that point. That's a silence M4 coming down. Pop Dog, bear in mind. It's, magic. It's, it's a bit weird that, you know, they didn't all just drop with Hunter there after he had spotted one in the back. It's like, oh, they, they're here, boys. We can, we can get them. You know, they were going for more of a dank flank, but it wasn't to come on through. And now just with these pistols, Seems like it is most likely going to be another now sports round on the board. Amanek about to be flushed out, spammed on through. Molotov as well, and there's the kill. Frozen will claim that one. And that's the start we're looking for here. So far in terms of the opening duels, now sports are winning three to two. Multi kills in their favor, five to two as well here. Gave it a good go, but Carrigan bests Kenny. It doesn't look good for Hunter either. He is getting roasted out of the bottom of the train here. It's going to be Carrigan to take him down. Bit of a master on this particular map. As we'll see, just Jax remain. No damage inflicted to four of the Mouse Balls players as they get the bomb down as well. Jax will be lucky to get our kill, as it seems like they found him. And it'll be Chris J to put him a bed there. It's going to be 5-0 overall. And now maybe even a double orb set up on the CT side. Things couldn't go much worse than at this stage. So Kenny is with the first. See if they fancy it. Similar start, different team to Vertigo. 7-0 was the G2 start. 5-0 now for Mouse Sports. So we've watched a lot of G2 on train, I think, recently. Remember, Amanek does like to AWP quite a lot, if he can. Doesn't want to bring it out just yet. So M4 for round number six. Mouse Sports, they've already had a decent half at this stage. They can just keep applying this pressure, keep the speed and pace up. And they'll throw a couple of grenades towards the bomb train itself. Interesting. So you've seen Mouse Sports do this a couple of times. It seems that they want to throw HEs out of main as a matter, as a way to pull utility out of the CTs early. Well, normally when they do their smoke wall, uh, people are jumping across the top of the bomb train and trying to push through that sandwich smoke to deal with Carrigan weaseling behind aggressive. it. This is We've seen this so much from G2. Just within these two maps on their CT side, they love to walk on in, take this aggression, and it's, they're backing their aim, right? They're backing their crosshairs in in these situations. The, la the fact that they're not using utility smokes, flashes to get on into those positions, mean that tell isn't going on through to mouse bots. They aren't aware they've lost this territory. The setup is so strong. Because they're in main, Amanek can play green train for IV. And if they come down pop, you've got Hunter in main with a real tight line for anyone that leaves pop dog. This is a good setup. I love it from G2. And I struggle to see how they break through. This was his chance. And oh, just like that, now they're exposed. Hunter has to hold the line. Jack's still responsible for main. Oh. Nobody's coming. Can he see the barrel of main entrance there. It looked like he could. Oh, they're heading in. Our Frozen could go backtracks here. Good catch. Hunter reveals he's sitting in main. They still haven't committed. There's nades all over the place. Frozen taps away. Hanexa will shut him down. 3v3. Looks like Inna's going to be the port of call. Kenny Smoke may not hold them at bay, and he re-peeks straight into Voxic. Oh, it's so good for Voxic there. He sees the smoke coming through. He knows he's got a window to get in position and take down Kenny S. Three versus two, but G2 probably needs to go for this one. They've got the kits, smokes, incendiaries, flashbangs as well. But a man disadvantage. Next, they're looking to change that. Does get a ding towards Chris Jake and follow it up with the HE. That's going to take him down. Now they've got a chance. They can still smoke the bomb. They have to go for this one. They need this round. Best chance they've had. And it might have been shut down already. Rops will continue. 
Well, his success here on train, the incendiary does nothing for them. Voxel is already at the ladder. Nexa knows his days are numbered here. He won't even get the shot in and mount spots. 6-0 now on the T side of train. Similar start to Vertigo, just the other way around. That's uh, one of the tendencies of Woxic that they like to run with here is get him down low ramp and then post him up to watch Connector with the AWP. The fact that he had the lucky timing there onto Kenny. Kenny's going to be kicking himself right now because he's 0 and 6 and he has 0 ADR, which means he hasn't even had a chance to shoot a bullet at anybody right now, or maybe he has, but... Did Frozen die or is he still unde undefeated? I think, he, yeah, okay, so 10 and 1 now. He did go down in that previous round, 167 ADR. He is heads and shoulders above anyone else. And my goodness, Kenny on that goose egg, still such a prominent presence on map one, but so far unable to get too much going. Yeah, that means not a single grenade or bullets landed for him yet. He's been wrecked, rattled. And they've got another eco coming up in round number seven as well. Uh, at least a very partial buy. They can get Deagle armor, but Kenny probably can't with $3,600. He actually has the least amount of cash here considering he's the author. So, their woes continue by looks of things here, and the money continues to swell on the mouse board side of things. Or for Volksik with $11,000 behind him as well, with all the grenades. I don't think they'll be eco the rest of this half. Well, Mouse have definitely changed their approach, right? They haven't just gone with the five and Ebox smoke and out to, to lane to find some opening kills. They've gone with different variations, and they've had success on Carrigan. And I think that's the difference maker here today is with some of these other matches we've seen from Mouse. We know that Carrigan very vocal about when he has a bad performance. Well, here he's looked much more assertive. Same thing can be said for Vertigo. He was doing a good job of stopping a lot of those A ramp pushes. But here's Rops getting greeted with a CZ. We'll drop Hunter very quickly. Now the nades can follow. Molotov to flush out anyone from the E box position. And this should be a pretty clean round from Mouse. I think you might be right. G2 will be sticking together using the buddy system towards outside and inner. But they currently hold in towards hell. See, Jax and Kenny. Hoping to get a couple of deagle kills here if possible. Kenny with no armor, for reason we stated before. And Crochet to flush the position out, probably gets both. And he certainly will. Five versus two, Crochet one point of health. That's a tough one. One additional point of damage would have forced a full rebuy, but as you said, doesn't look like the Mount Sports Bank is any close to being broken. Does finally go down. Smoke for the weapon retrieval. Oxic trying to get ahead of that to stop it. Look at him. Oh no, he puts himself at risk. Now they want it too. This is a bit of a clown fiesta, but it does look like Nex has got himself an AK. He could try and get out of there. He's actually going to fight in the spray as wild as it was. <laughs> Carrigan's doing concentric circles. But we do eventually have it all done. Well, no weapon saved. been a strange finish to that round, but uh, I'm just glad it's over. Yeah, you know, I thought you might be. I was making sure I kept talking, so you weren't talking about that one. I yeah. appreciate it. Look at this mess from Garrigan there. But he gets the kill. I'm fine with that. And we will see G2 with the double orb set up as expected. Amanek, Chad, do you remember the conversation we had? It felt like he was almost forcing the orb every single On time. On Mirage, right? it was yeah. really bad, right? On Mirage, they were doing it a lot, and they were left That's in right. retake situations, finding no success, or he's being overrun right there. So... Well, there we go. Kenny's on the board, ladies and gentlemen. That's his opening frag. The first one, the sniper is in the server, that's for sure. And Carrigan's going to get taken down as well. He so. was flashed. Just uh, looked a bit weird there. He, well, you can see the assist of Amanek, so he was just hoping he could stay quiet, but didn't realize he's in the flames. So, surely, this is where G2 come to life here. Frozen at the end of Ivy, though. No, he's going to take matters into his own hands, potentially. He's got Rops behind him. A very powerful duo. And there's double orbs to defend Ivy here. They could be in trouble. Yeah, how do they swing on this? Amanek, they're already set up, mate. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Frozen just decapitates him, and that's one of the AWPs out of the round before it even gets a shot fired. Yeah, that's huge, and Jax will have to push inside. Luckily, no one there, but Voxic with the AWP is a main entrance. They do tend to have the buddy system for these aggressive pushes, though. Yeah. It's very clearly defined within their rule set that they have to travel in pairs. Noah would be proud. And he's in a real tough spot. He's got to be responsible for the potential of backtracks. And he does manage to catch one in limbo. Frozen, leaving the safe haven that was IV and now walked into the crosshairs. And Jax's aggression has found Voxic as well. Kenny will round it out. That's a first round, really, for him. All three kills going his way puts him nice 
as the impact player of round eight. So they wake up and it is feeling a little bit like Vertigo, 7-1. <laughs> Here we go, it's gonna eight, be, seven, half. Here's the thing, I think that Mouse have done a lot of work in the in the few days off that they've had since their last matchup to, to retool here. Vertigo, we saw some positive signs. Here, we're definitely seeing a couple of those too. And, and I mean that because they're not just going for their standard play. They're not just going for the five and E-box smoke with the, with the Molotov towards the back of green, hoping the character can find some space. They're showing it different looks, and G2 would have prepared for the old look, not this uh, new stuff that Mouseports are throwing in their direction. Oh, that's a fantastic opening for Agamonek. Been having a bit of a nightmare holding down this IV position with the AWP first frozen. Now it's Voxic to take him out, and here comes again the partnership. It's Jackson Hunter, the scouts of this defense. They'll wait for it to fade, maybe walk through as it does. Yep. No one home. Two Ivy, though. This could be interesting. Boxic. Oh, jumping. Good movement. Does manage to get the information for free. So that's going to funnel them towards inside. They had the man advantage with one quick flash, and in they go. Kenny S is not there to defend it, and he will swing forward and get a kill. That's towards Rock, but a fantastic shot there from Carrigan. Does get them back in the round. Substantial damage towards Kenny as well. Good smoke from Carrigan. Allows him to get as close as he likes now towards Connector. Frozen, I'm pretty sure he secures the round with this flank. It looks too good. And they're saving. Wow, Frozen's position is so perfect. Going back, Trank Stoge does look like two of them should get away with their rifle. Is there anything for Frozen to find? Doesn't look that way. Instead, Jax patrolling. He's going to be able to catch at least one, perhaps a second. Voxit catching a lot of damage. That's going to keep them on their toes. They are still lingering to try and Catch a couple on the way out. Chipple and Whittle away at the eco economics. Uh oh. But Frozen's gonna find them. Anticipating the second, Kenny gets out of dodge and he does get caught. Frozen happily greets Kenny with a bullet. Don't know why he was taking that fight. Didn't need to. Yeah, Frozen's looking sharp though, isn't he? It really is. What a fantastic showing from him today. It's gonna be 8 1 and G2. They won't save a damn thing, Amanek. Waiting for his chance against Vox. If the flashbang comes in, we'll see that double on the corner. Catches him fully. Nothing he can do. Beautifully done by Voxy there. So that's one's pretty well rehearsed. If you watch yep. uh, any of the Vox extreme when he's playing train, that's a pick he goes for very, very often. And here we go. This might be the pace change. Oh, wait. The nades are coming back out towards the bomb train. There's someone up there. Ooh. Jax will just take a little chunk of damage there. But look how far back they're sitting. They haven't pushed up towards close main or pop off the bat. We've got three players currently clustered on the bomb train. One over towards hell. Now the smokes will come. This is a delayed hit. And they immediately throw a Molotov to slow them down. Carrigan doesn't want them pushing main. That's why his incendiary goes down and they go through the smoke. The battle for main begins. And Jackson Hunter again, this partnership continues in pop. Flash. And they heard the impact. They know there was someone down there, but Chris J and Carrigan, a partnership of their very own, and they're looking for a lethal Aggression straight onto the site. Carrigan's going to behead Jax and Amanek straight away equalizing straight through the Ivy oh. smoke, but they surely anticipating this. Nexus is jiggling for it. Nexus oh. will go down though, and Carrigan's found the frag that shifts the tide of battle. Where's that bomb going? You know, oh. it certainly will. Kenny, however, has leveled the odds. Great chance for Carrigan. He was actually lucky to meet Kenny S there. I dare say the advantage is a great shot from the sniper. Almanek, though, has our position, but it hasn't got the cleanest of kills. Gives Foxic a chance to catch his breath. Bomb on his back as well. We've been in plenty of scenarios where he can win these. And we're planting now. Pretty standard position. Looks towards main just to confirm it's clear. But he fancies something a bit different here. What's the plan? Going to try and take Kenny S down. Kenny loves those ones. Uh, I think anybody loves the kill where they're not looking your direction. So that'll be a bit of a freebie right there. And two very important frags, right? If Kenny didn't take Carrigan out of the equation when he was getting that connector control and pushing towards CT spawn, that could have been the round done and dusted right there and then. So the buy will come on through once more for G2, but it's it's not great, uh, if I'm honest. The MP9 in the hands of Nexa could be a little bit worrying here. But the orgs come out in Amanex, so that's an interesting one. We haven't seen too many of those getting purchased on up. Maybe one a game at the, at the moment? Yeah, it seems to have its uses and certainly no better position than Amanex Ivy Hold. And good shot from Woxic through the corner of the train. Gives Kenny a chance to try and use all of those nades he spent all of his schmeckles on. He's got an AWP on his back as well. Protect the president, protect Kenny S. Lots Oof. of long range lines he can take. See whether Chris J's got further forward to flush out Jax towards heaven. 
It's such a difficult scenario for him. It could be players anywhere, but it looks like he's threaded a needle efficiently. Kenny S will strike now. That's in the back tracks, but we do have Frozen Plum in that bomb. And no kits available. Kenny does have one, but he's on 6 HP. Do they even fancy this round? They're 8-2 down. Kind of need this one as well. They can smoke the bomb itself, but SMGs are for mass to try and retake against four Ts. I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, it doesn't look possible. A smoke is their best bet, but looks like the save call has been made. Going to give it another go. Rops may not let that happen, though. You can see he is still in a position to punish. As they cower towards CT spawn, though, it's looking less and less likely. The G2 will lose these rifles. The hunt from Frozen was very effective in the round prior, but this time looking a little more passive. You can see that those funds, those bountiful funds, will need a little bit more love for the T side. Keep it stable. Chris J down to 3.8. Boys, we're going to jump into Skybox here. I just want to show you how stifling these Molotovs are. I've drawn you a, a lovely little box. Oh, just I see look that. at all the Molotovs that get dropped in that box from the side of Mouse Look at this. Pushes Jax back. A smoke from Chris J to shroud him. Another one over towards Stop. They can't peek. Chris has got a Molotov. He lobs his in now. It forces Hunter. Actually, that's not the one. There's another Molotov coming that will force Hunter back as well from this side. And it's fantastic of Mouse Watch just forcing them back off the bomb train so they can take all this room. It was good stuff just there. Yeah, difficult to handle, that's for sure. But they do save three weapons. Kenny S still has. EWP, they've got the AK of Nexa, and a FAMAS for Jax. Not the best setup, but it's enough to win a round, and that's exactly what they need, because they're 9-2 down on the CT side. And Train really hasn't looked too good for Ooh. them. Kenny S loses the op straight away, just trying to challenge there. With the flash out, the smoke, trying to get a bit of information with the pixel peak, but overstepped the mark, and he loses the sniper. Whoops, he's got a cow like kills ever looks at things. You know he's not going to go down. He's just going to stand there and hold the line. Baiting him with a step, and it did work out. And actually, Nexus rifle is there as oh. well. Woxic's taken down Hamanek. He's hanging. He's holding them at arm's reach. And Carrigan descending straight into Jax. He wasn't expecting that. Voxic with three, holding from the vending machines here. And Hunter, well, he doesn't really fancy that one. Understandably so. It's going to be ten rounds here for Mouse Sports as they look to take us to a third. It's looking like a bit of a lock-in at this stage. G2 just haven't been able to get going here. It was 7-0 down to kick things off, then posted their first round at number eight. Number 10 was wow. theirs as well, but that's all they found, and all five players are dropped. It wasn't a full investment, so they still have a buy here for round number 13, but still, things not looking much better. There's Voxic after killing Kenny S. Uh, Ivy comes in towards the waiting room, pulls out a magazine, and takes down three players. So look at this right now. Mouse Sports have four individuals with 70-plus ADR, 10 rounds into the game. You look at the G2 Esports side, not a single, well, sorry, one individual, which is Jax, has over 70 ADR. Everybody else is sitting around that 50 mark. 46 for Kenny, obviously the AWP player, 49 for Amanek. And the multi-kills, well, it's not looking great. 13 to 9 in favor of Mouse here. They continue to find op openings off the back of Woxic. And now, at this stage of the game, it almost feels like G2 will have to buy out, force buy, whatever they can, throw the kitchen sink at them, because you start to need some rounds. Yeah. I mean, 13-2 just isn't good enough. Really does put all, way too much weight on that pistol round. Keeping it competitive, 10-5. Very different world out there. Here we go, then, lining up the smokes. Spawns full connect out. Foxy to deploy it. They've got enough rounds now for the first half. More than enough. This is just to lock it in. The smoke's down. We will see the bomb site covered as well. Looking to get a plant down if possible. But they still have flashes and molotovs available. Starting to make a bit of progress now. Carrigan finding his way towards a bomb train. But the CTs are pushed towards pop again. Are they heading a T spawn? It's a lot of space now. Just off those smokes. Yeah, Jackson Hunter again on the flank. Previously, boxic has been quite wise to it. But let's see. How this one continues to play out. To contest. Oh, Amanek had a good chance there, but Chris J very quick. Stops the denial of the plant. So now advantage mouse sports extended. Well, Voxic, he looks to guarantee things here. No kits available. Kenny S with no armor. They have a single smoke hunter with no heads. And that should be uh, all she wrote. As we see, Kenny S, 20 HP, now zero. I think this map's done, Shad, unfortunately. Yeah, they're not fighting for control at this point, G2, because I don't think that they they're, can. They're, they're trying to steal it away, though, with these weird kind of pushes towards T-Spawn. They've tried a few times. It's obviously like something they've come up with, right, to try and yeah. challenge this outside approach. 
I just think that the way that they were set up in that post plant situation, Woxie being able to watch main from sandwich, like that was the only place that he was focusing on for a lot of that uh, post plant scenario there. So if you can get all of your members onto yard cleanly, you can set up, you get the triangle of death when the bomb goes down and everybody knows what they should be watching. Well, it's the CTs now trying to take yard like a T team, right? Yeah. So uh, it kind of changes a little bit. We know how hard it can be. Mouse sports making it look easy here. But most teams definitely aren't getting a haul of potentially 13 on their T half. Ooh, Rob loves that challenge alone. I, I don't know why. When you're going to take the round so slowly anyway, why not get your teammates to flash you in just to guarantee it? You've just given away an AK potentially now to Hunter, which is a huge deal. That is called to cost you one flashbang to clear that out. If we're lucky sure. he hasn't picked it up yet, right? So that's one positive going in their way. But Carrigan could go down here as well any second. There it is. Yeah, a bit of a weird approach from our sports this time. But I guess they've already got 11 rounds. Can't be too mad about it. They can still pull the round back, of course. This will be the kill that decides if Amanek steals one away. They probably... Oh, doesn't quite get it. But he does damage enough to set Kenny up. Bit of a messy one here from our sports. And that spray is no different. It finally does convert. But it ultimately will be the end of Frozen. Voxig now throws away the orb. Go try and hide some weapons, I'd imagine. <laughs> Ladders, yeah. Ladders, yeah. They'll get you. Voxic wants to have a good go of this one, though. He's got the bomb and an AK now. Nix is playing very safe. He hears Voxic drop. It's pretty much game over. Now he's got the info down to seven. A single bullet's all that Enixa needs to hit, but he's fluffed it. Oh, oh, he had his eye cross there towards Hunter. But Hunter pulls the trigger first. That's the third for G2. The third. I did not stutter. That is a dominant side of Mouse Sports here on their map. Pick demonstrating as to why, and with a different look, a different taste, a different marinade this time on their train. Yeah, right now, it doesn't even matter that they lost that round, to be completely honest with you. It will matter if we get back and this is a 16-14 yeah. overtime affair, but within the context of the, the mindset for Mouse Sports, it's not going to do too much. They have a large amount of money left in the bank. It is the last round of the first half here, and, well, 11-4, 12-3, doesn't really matter. It's still a massive haul. <laughs> Six flashes deployed, and a lot of damage inflicted towards Carrigan here. He'll be down at 16, just trying to dump his grenades before he's dropped out, see if he can have some sort of impact here. He does sneak past Jax. That's going to be a great work for him, considering he's such low HP. Down to the four versus four, and it's absolute chaos out there on the outside bombsite right now. Smokes still available for Mouse Sports here. They get deeper and deeper down the enemy lines. Looking for the plan, if possible, the bomb is on the back of Voxic, and he's the sniper. Yeah, slower approach, take some control, deny vision, and set up. Amanek taking some initiative. He wants to flank all the way, pushing down Ivy. Typically, woxic has been very ready for... Oh, okay. He is once again responsible for the flank, but this time, the timing's a little different. It's from Ivy. It's not the hunter push that we've seen in the past from Inner. And that's going to be the bomb if he gets this. Oh, he's got a bit of discipline on him as well. He's got two heads, two backs turned. Does execute the first. Spots Rops. He knows where they all are. That should be the fourth and the final round of this half going the way of G2. It's confirmed.
is their perma pick. 11 rounds on the T side. Now venturing into the defense. It does look like a sealed deal. I think he might be right, but trust me, G2 can do something with this. It all starts with a bit of a, a pistol victory, and they've got a technical approach here, Alex. Three smokes and five flashbangs. It's something that's going to be a bit exciting here. It looks to be like a position outside. We've got the next uh, Jack slamming those smokes now. Got to be showing us what they're made of. It all starts with this bomb plant. If they get that down, they're onto something. See all the smokes being deployed right now. Flashes to follow. And you see that bomb site just covered. And the smoke here. Flashes to come through. It's a passive hole in the CT as well. Can yes, quick plan. Rops. He had no idea. Perfect. That is just a completely uncontestable plant. And already, Rops, the only exposed position over the smokes, has gone down. Oof! Double HEs to Kenny's e box position, but he lives to tell somewhat of the story and landing a dink into Carrigan. His mission's practically complete. He wants to stop it. He knows they can be defusing and he stabs him in the bottom. Kenny, that's a great start. And from behind, Hunter can strike a double kill. G2. It all falls to Woxic. He's miles away. A good attempt towards the Hunter position, but he's got eight points of health. A single bullet will secure the fifth. Beautiful from G2. Excellent smokes, few flashes, a passive hole from Mouseports there, and the bomb goes down very quickly. It was a nice spot there from the CTs spotting towards heaven, but you can see they couldn't even see a player crossing over, Chad. Yeah, and we just were talking positive signs for Mouse, right? First half was, was great. Vertigo, they looked more threatening than what we've kind of felt out of them in, in some time. But now I get a little bit more worried because if they lose train after that first half... It could be them done. ...and G2 come back and they're able to push them, I get really worried for the mentality of Mouse Sports, right? Because I know that there's some emotional personalities in that team. And they've been on a bit of a, a losing streak or a losing way in recent times. So let's hope at least for the structure of the squad that they can pull this one together. It should still be a mouse lock-in. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is their best map. Four MAC-10s. How very French of them. They do love the uh, four SMGs with the one rifle. And it always t seems to be Kenny with that one rifle. So it's like that over on Vertigo. It's like he just continues to be the quote-unquote Orpa, long range supporter. Yeah, you guys, we're just, this is like a mini version. Yeah, yeah right? it is. You guys are still going to be rushing. You're just going to do more of it. And I'm going to try and sit at the back and tap at the heads. Waited a long time for that exchange, but Frozen, he's going to get hunted down. Hunter did not hesitate. That nade looks good. Just going to be a bit too deep. Doesn't quite catch him as he will be able to jump back across, confirming Carrigan's position on the E-Box. They're not in any rush here, but 38 on the clock. Looks like Main and Pop will have to be the hit. Another flash, not quite over the top, but shouldn't be the end of the world. Well, here we go then. G2 Ooh. will be receiving their first casualty in the form of Hunter. Shot's starting to land now, but Carrigan will also protect the 50, but he's actually got the advantage here. How is Jax running? And it looks like this could actually fall apart now. There's no bomb being planted. 15 seconds is going to be can really stop it again. messy. He can, and he does. Huge. They have to close the gap, but from behind, Voxic will get his second. And Mouse Sports immediately bite back with the second round force. Very messy from G2 there. Not really sure what they were going for. They left no time. They hadn't really cleared anything out. And then the scramble to get the bomb down. They were using the buddy system so efficiently in that first half. Didn't really see it utilized there at all. No one covering the planter. Taking down twice by the P250. And Carrigan cannot believe his luck. So round 18. They're going to have to force by what they can. Tech 9s, Deagles, Mac 10s. They lose this round. It's pretty much GG. There'll, there'll be no way back in. Well, at least my concerns have uh, dissipated very, very quickly here. Yeah. We're on board with Hunter's smoke dipping on down towards that connector. And that will be the tell of a fast in. The grenade will land. There's a decent amount of damage there and will actually dissuade G2 from continuing that inner push. Could potentially just be to draw a fast rotation because look, the flash comes over, they're out main, they're go going straight to pop towards connector here. Boosted though, seems like a dream setup for this and just taking those fights with a pinch of salt. Carrigan, 4K. Armored pistols, not quite gonna get the ace. Hunter makes sure of that, but the rest oh. should. All be said and done. A great shot, though. Woxic forced to rebuy all of his goodies. If he hits another oh! one, I'll start to raise my voice because now they're looking one way. Hunter has a chance. Doesn't quite have landed onto Chris J into the shoulder blades, but my God, I told you, when he's on low HP, he enters a different zone. Unfortunately, G2 will be full eco if they want to stay alive in this one, but a great effort there from Hunter. 
$2,000 per player, so they could buy into this one and try and ride the coattails loss bonus or take the full eco, and either way, it's going to be bad news for G2 all day long. Carrigan is completely wrecked in there. Very confident spray with him in the M4A4 as well. And indeed, just the... Uh, Blocks, a couple of deagles in there, but not really much else. Should well, be 14-5. They bottlenecked them in the way they wanted to, right? Like, the strat worked. The fake in it with the connector smoker, it worked. It drew that rotation. Just unfortunately, Carrigan uh, hit a couple of bangers there, knowing that they were all in his line of sight as soon as he rounded that connector position. And, well, here goes Jax. This should be a quick one. I don't think we'll have too many deagle heroics this time round. You'd assume so. Chance now for Carrigan. More... For him to strike, but looks like Voxic's too interested in finding the frags for himself. Kenny's not quite going to go down on his retreat. Voxic's missing his shot. Carrigan will not, though. I've just ha heard uh, that Rops's PC does have a bit of an oopsie here. So, oh, do we get to go into kind of fun mode? Yeah, I think, fun mode. I think there will be a timeout, technical timeout here. As we he's need to be fun restarting. Mode. About one minute, though. Shouldn't be too yeah, long. this map hasn't been the best. We normally bring in fun mode now, and he set up the third map to be epic, right? That's our whole thing. Is it Dust 2 to close it out as well? It is, D2. Well, there you go. So that's uh, boating very well, and we get a chance to calm down and get out of commentator mode for a second. <sighs> Alex, how are you as a person? As a person, I'm good. I'm looking forward to the day off. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, when was the last time you had a day off? It feels last Monday. Monday yeah. Last Monday, that feels about a year ago. Yeah. Honestly, with you, I don't know... What day it is right now? Is it Sunday? Sunday. 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 Yeah, like it feels like we've been doing this a while, but what are you going to do with the day off? Probably um, what I've always done. <laughs> sit indoors uh, and play video sit games. Sit indoors and play video games. Might we, I might sit on the balcony. We did get uh, a cricket set, so we could play for the football around as well. I did enjoy the, yeah, the trace on us around this football. The weather's a little bit rubbish tomorrow, boys. That's a problem. Yeah. But they, we could be brave. To be fair, cricket is not known to be played in the rain. No, That's one of the sports they just definitely cancel. There's ever rain. They <laughs> that always say, you know what? <laughs> you can't yeah. play. It won't happen. But we are playing quick cricket, so maybe a bit more versatile. We get the marquee up. Well, if we get the boys out there in their speedo, we could probably get away with it, right? Well, I've got mine with me. Don't well, necessarily have to wear it. We call it a, a budgie smuggler in yeah, Australia. Yeah, we do too. Oh, you guys we call it a budgie that. smuggler as well? A budgie Absolutely. Smugglers. I've never owned one, and you probably have, Jack. A budgie? Uh, the smuggler. The smuggler. Yeah. Uh, I personally would have, as a kid, yeah, probably. Yeah. But then you as you become a teenager, well, you go into board some, shorts. With some like, sort of fancy dress on the desk with a matching outfit. That's true. Maybe we could do matching speedos with one day next week. It, it, well, it won't go down I wonder very what well. what the demand would be like, though. The demand? Yeah, to the see people. you in speedos, Chad. <laughs> I, I think it would be pretty high. Pretty small, I would hope. No, well, I, I would hope it wasn't small, if I'm honest. But uh, all the same, round 20 is about to take place and Carrigan's bringing a spot of AWP aggression to the mix into the Kenny AWP. So yeah. that's an opening frag. There's a few AWPers I'd like to swing into that smoke, uh, to that, the flames on the floor. Carrigan's probably not one of them. That's an incredibly difficult procedure. Uh, but a nice idea. We will have an opening kill for Kenny S. Just trying to make the scoreline a bit more competitive at this stage. If we can... Start to see my double digits. We'll start that conversation about the comeback, but there's still so much work to be done before we can even initiate that chat. Boxic told it was inside. So the opening kill for G2 here doesn't necessarily guarantee the round at all. Bit of an inner stack here then from the CTs. Gambling towards the inner. This push will be enough for them to start moving their pieces back towards the yard position. This is going to work out well for them, but next up... Oh. Yeah, that's an important survival from Robs that could have ended up opening the floodgates to B, but by standing his ground, they can continue to rotate and set up for this execute. The smokes are flying through the sky to same nades that got the bomb down for the G2 pistol. Oh, not far off from stopping the bomb plant with that incendiary. Chris is going to get caught advancing through the smoke. Frozen's done the same, though. He's on that bomb train now. He could try and contest. They're going to push together. Voxic's oh. going up the ladder, and he's got so much damage done. It's frozen. Ice in his veins. Three frags to his name. Kenny, however, standing his ground. 2v2. Bomb down and in favor of G2. Frozen up and alive. Oh. That's insane. Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. That's a bit much. <laughs> You're going to have an ace on the agenda here. And next up... Uh, He'll be behind the E-Box. Full Diffuse certainly available. Frozen's going to have to go for it. And now we will see if Nexus oh. can convert the spray. Looks like he's done enough here. Frozen's still on for the ace. He's running out of time. He has to go for the full Diffuse. He jumps up again. Is oh, it going to be it's good? It's he's good. Got it. Has he it's got gonna it? be close. I think he's done it. The ace clutch from Frozen. Oh. 
Oh, I can't believe oh, it. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry for anybody listening with headphones. <laughs> my ears did explode yeah. a little bit. I've got to set the maximum volume over here. Yeah, and that's just, an involuntary like, sound. my brain. Yep, I'd like to apologize. <laughs> Thanks very much, Frozen, though. The first two were lovely. Picking up the third as Aminate gets the bomb down. That advantage lasted for a moment, but Look this is just nonsense. Getting the fourth and even tidying it up with the defuse in the last second. 21 kills to eight as he makes sure that G2's comeback is nothing but a dream. Beautiful stuff from Frozen. 15 to five, G2 will have the bomb down, but now need 10 rounds in a row just to get us to overtime. And it all starts with Mac 10s, MP7s, and a couple of AKs here. Kenny has for $4,000. It's gonna have to be some time out here to bring this game back to life, but it all starts here as we get into round number 21. So, double up setup, frozen with the most ridiculous of rounds. Yeah, no, you can't really complain about that. 21, he joins Carrick at the top of the scoreboard here on train. And now it just feels like a matter of time. Can they close it out cleanly though? It's something that Chad's been keeping an eye on with the top teams. Being able to convert that 14, now 15. Rox wants to take matters into his own hands and what? the flash, the 99 flag. damage. Oh dear. Oof. That looked like a perfect way to be starting the party. All right. Well, Rob said they had a couple of kills available to him in the very start there, but apparently the Mag 10 will come out on top. Amanek 10 will be closing things out towards inner. Look at the rotations, of course, as well. We've got three CTs ready and waiting now for the inside execution, but that's not coming, at least not yet. It's Voxic alone towards outside. He has got frozen towards connector if required. I like this, though, because if G2 were just to scamper on out, pop and mid, they're going to be looking for the closer jewels, not necessarily in these deep backlines right here. So with the orbs posted up towards yard, they might get a bit of a shooting gallery. The utility comes on over the top, frozen up within the heaven position. Let's see what Mouse can do with the number disadvantage. Voxic, he's got a boatload of a... Uh Aggression in his veins, but he has been caught out. Hunter's way further ahead than he anticipated. Frozen on Heaven's done a fantastic oh. job. He nearly got a third. Jax keeps him under wraps. Now a 2v2 Amanek. Surely going to meet Carrigan here, and he does. Jax ready for the trade, but the jiggle's good. Spray two. Puts it all onto one man to fend off the third map. It's Nexa. Chris J seems to have his number here as soon as he peeks to be taken down, but that's if, and it will be Chris J to close things out there. Beautiful shot from himself, and Mouse Sports have bounced back from their deficit on Vertigo. Their pick lands in their favor. It'll be 16 to five, an excellent performance, and it sets the scene beautifully for Dust2. We'll break this one down after this.